Good day and welcome to today's lesson. English lesson 14, grade 9, Introduction and Conclusion Writing. I'm Mrs. Swart and I'm going to take you through today's lesson. Now, how do you write a good introduction? I want you to remember, first of all, that creative writing differs from literary writing. A literary essay will have to verify facts, but creative writing means your facts do not have to be factually correct. That means you're the creator of the story. You can make things up. So this is a world of make-believe, or it can be based on the truth, but you don't have to worry about it being factually correct. Now, if you take a book like the Harry Potter, Chapter 1, The Boy Who Lived, if you look at the introduction, the first book would say a very simple introduction, but it is capturing. It would enthrall you and want you to read further. And there's an example of what it looked like. And even though it was very simple, it sort of tickled your taste buds and made you want to know a little bit more. When we think of writing, think of a movie, a film that you really enjoyed. When you watch a film, when you see the trailer, you want to find out more. You want to read more. So what we're going to do, we're going to tackle an example. We're going to read the topics that are offered. Remember, you get a variety to choose from. Then you are going to select the topic you can write about. That's the topic that suits you best. Then you will plan your ideas. And then you will write your very strong introduction and conclusion only after you've planned your ideas and decided what you're going to put where. So let's have a look at this. We're going to look at the topic, my best childhood memory. I want you to do the following. If you're someone who struggles to do your planning or struggles a little bit to think of ideas to write about, think of using the, uh, the W question words and how, things like that. So let's have a look at what you would do. This is a simple mind map. There are things like this is the introduction. It's about the childhood memories who was involved and this is something I'm telling you about my life, my sister and I, what happened, where did it happen, when, how did this event um, take place, why did it happen and then there's usually a moral involved as well and then of course we have the conclusion. So you'll see here I have put there that the introduction is going to be about childhood memories. I could start by saying my sister and I decided we wanted to have an ice cream. And that would be very boring. So instead we're going to make you curious by saying something about childhood memories. You have to grab the reader's attention. So your introduction about childhood memories is where you're going to cast a hook you want to catch this fish, you want to reel it in, you want to give a fascinating fact or something thought-provoking, something interesting. And then you can provide some more background information. I like to use this example for you. Um, we use things like, for descriptive language, we use adjectives to describe the nouns or adverbs to modify your verbs. Simple sentence like, the man crossed the road. How boring. You think of something a little bit more exciting. What type of man was it? What type of road was it? The old, rugged man crossed the busy road. And you can get even more descriptive with it. So let's go back to our childhood memories and look at things like. You could start with something really timid and boring. Like, when I was little, I was very naughty. Very boring. How about, I have some precious memories to share with you and this one will make you chuckle. And you can say a little bit more about it, give a little bit more body to it. And then with a conclusion, that is where you draw everything together. And you'll see that in this one, I'm going to tell you the story when I go back to the mind map. Now just to put you in the picture of how the story unfolds, that you can place it in context. The conclusion, my dad caught us. There could be a surprise element. There could be a twist in the tale. One of those that you would say, I didn't see that coming. Please, please never, ever, ever end with. And then I woke up and it was just a dream. 
it kills any good story. So, let's have a look at this. The introduction was the childhood memories. I was telling about, I want to share this, it's some a precious memory that will have you chuckling. Because my sister and I decided that we wanted to slip away to the roadhouse to go and buy an ice cream. But we were small. I was about five years old. And we were visiting an aunt of ours. She lived close to the roadhouse. So what happened was we decided, well, we can go, even though our parents um, allowed us to play in the backyard. Because what we did was we climbed over the fences in through everyone's backyards until we got to the roadhouse. And we decided, okay, now we're going to buy this ice cream. Why on earth would we do it? Because we wanted an ice cream. Now, I'm putting this in context for you, but if you go and write this story, I think you can find it much more exciting than that. And my dad caught us, and what happens was when we got home, my brothers um, told us that something that works very well is to put magazines in your long pants so that your father won't if he smacks you on the butt because you were naughty that it would protect you so you can put things in where you it doesn't have to be real things that happen it can actually just be make-believe you're making the story up you might never have experienced something like that you might have read about something like that you might have seen a film that inspired you to write so when you want to write a creative piece make sure that you get inspiration somewhere, read a lot, watch films, look on things like um, TikTok, look at different types of social media where you could be inspired to write something very good. But make it your own. Don't come and retell the beauty and the beast, for instance. Make sure that whatever you do is something that is your own personal work. Then last but not least, I always tell you practice makes perfect. What I want you to do is click on the link below and then what you're going to do is identify the responses that are connected to introduction and conclusion writing. There is also the QR code on the next slide and I'd like you to try that, see if you can get it right. Remember, you don't have to do it immediately, but do try it at some stage. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.